Hi people, it's a Thursday. I've been alone this week and usually I'm okay with that, but this week has been um, a little bit lonely. And uh, I haven't had any work this week, which is not really good. Usually when I have to spend a week alone, um, I look at it as sort of a a holiday for myself to just be alone. Um, I wanted to sort of make this as a video response to Peter Mullman, who does a really nice YouTube channel, and uh, um, he really likes to make furniture, and I also like um, Careful Carpenter, who's very thoughtful and uh, does really beautiful work. Um, I have uh, had a, a small export business here in France for quite a few years now, and I finally formalized it last September, so it's all fully legal and declared now. You know, before it was sort of ad hoc. Now this is the, the sort of thing that I find in consignment barns here in France, and I can also go to flea markets in Paris, where it's more expensive, but it's more convenient for me. I mean, I can just take a bus to Clignancourt, for example. And there are people right on hand who can arrange the shipping and the insurance and everything. It's just it's just more money. If I um, am out in the country in Alsace or the south of France, or I, I haven't been to Brittany in a couple of years, but there's great stuff out there. Um, I do know how to speak French well enough so that I can fix the price, uh, ask the owner uh, to hold it because I think I might have a client for it, take a digital photo, email it to somebody, see if they want it or not, you know, take the dimensions and um, then arrange for a local mover to pick it up, pack it, and ship it to you. And I must say, um, the best way to buy this sort of thing, which is incredibly cheap generally, it depends. You know, if we're talking, you know, a quality handmade 19th or 18th century grandfather clock from Alsace, it will be a bit more, but it's really not that much. And, you know, the stuff still works. It's in perfect condition. I mean, you know, what do you want? You know, it's all one of a kind. And um, this, this cornice at the top actually comes off. Now, a lot of this stuff was, the, the final construction of it was done in, for example, the farmhouse home. And a lot of French country residences are still basically very small one-room places because you pay a tax based on the size of your place. There used to be a window tax in France. So in very old buildings, you will find no windows because they didn't want to pay the tax, which is sort of like why we don't have a TV, because we don't want to pay the TV tax here. Also, French TV is very bad. I think the light is not too bad in here. Let me turn on this light. The thing that's nice about these pieces is, like, this was the armoire for my husband's grandmother's farmhouse, where everybody lived in one room together, and there was a huge um, fireplace, took up a whole wall, and uh, the beds were all right close to each other in the back, and just there was just like a little half wall divider of frosted glass, and just one window and one door, and there was like a storage loft above. And um, this is where the family would keep their valuables, and I try to always get things which have working keys in them. And I've had people visit here who do woodworking and cabinetry, and they've been very impressed by this, this particular piece. You know, this is where your linens would go, and your valuables, and um, it's very, very, very strong. And it's got drawers where I have old cassette tapes. I still listen to them. This is my record collection. It's a little bit dark in here, sorry. There's another drawer. Uh, everything still works in these. And there's a hook here to... See see all the stuff I have stored in here? I mean, it's just it's just huge. This is mostly for my record collection with uh, some stuff stored in the bottom. And um, this stuff never really sags or falls apart. Um, and it's a little bit rustic on the inside because that's just the inside. 
but the outside is beautifully finished and you just clean it with like some Murphy's oil soap or the equivalent. The only problem with this was that um, the family, uh, people here in France don't like this furniture. They consider it old. They don't want it. They want something new. So this was left in the old house and they built a new house right next door. Again, very small. And um, oh, this is a shopping basket from Provence. What happened was the bottom feet here uh, kind of got rotted out, so it doesn't stand quite straight. And I had this idiot here helping me, and um, he kind of messed it up. But it's 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 not serious. I mean, it's not really harming the the furniture that it's a little bit not straight. You know, it's just I wish it was better, but it weighs a ton, <laughs> you know. And you do have to check the size of your doors and how you're going to get this stuff in and out of where you live if you want to buy any from me. We got this for free. Um, they didn't know what to do with it. They were surprised that we wanted it. And I spoke up immediately and said, I will pay for the shipping from Brittany to our place here in Paris. And actually, I wasn't sure that they could get it through the door. But it worked out. I mean, I, I had taken the dimensions and, you know, the cornice does come off the top. And uh, it worked out. Now, the other piece I have here, and, and it locks, you know. I mean, it locks, uh, and I, I hide the keys, you know. Just like in the country, you know. Viking women would wear the keys on a belt around their waist. And uh, this is uh, another thing from his grandmother. And his parents didn't want it, you know. Uh, they wanted something new, you know. And I was like, are you serious? We'll take it. And this has got some fabric in it, which is very old. And they were like, well, replace the fabric. I was like, no, this is charming old fabric. I'm going to leave it in there. It's not rotten or anything. And this is where the housewife, and this was all in one room, you know. She would keep um, her pots and pans and her dishes and uh, maybe a couple of decorative items here. I've got a lot of junk here a lot of decorative junk, uh, maybe a soup tureen. This is a nice old 18th century French one. This is a French platter. I f this is 18th century French. I find a lot of great stuff. Um, and this was, you know, where you would keep your flatware, your knives, uh, your cooking utensils. And you do have to keep after the locks and keep them oiled and like with some WD-40 in them. But these are extremely practical. There's usually a hook to secure the left door and uh, well I, I really just keep glasses and extra china and stuff in here. And um, I don't remember if the cornice comes off the top of this or not but this whole thing actually does disassemble. It's just incredible. See these these legs here um, support the top, which lifts off, and uh, a couple of strong people can put it back on. Um, these drawers are open right now, but they do lock, and the bottom locks. And again, there's a hook, and you know these are. I have some china I inherited and stuff like that some seasonal decorations. Um, and one thing that's nice about these sort of things is as much as I love custom cabinetry and carpentry and stuff, you know, permanent fixtures which are custom made and which stay there, which tend to increase the value of your real estate, one would hope. The thing that's nice about this stuff is even though it's big and heavy, you can take it with you. You really can. Um, it's it's and it's something that is very solid and heavy. Um, it's very hard to damage. Um, I yeah, somebody could take a crowbar and pry it open or smash through it. Um, you know, get a real safe to to store your valuables. But it's kind of nice that you can that you can lock them and. Um, uh, you know, they're very convenient, you know, for your 
family papers, checkbook. See, if we go away, I can lock this. You know, and because if you lose your ID papers here in France, it's a huge hassle. You know, we might not have all of them on us uh, all the time. So if you, um, I know that a lot of Americans right now don't have very much money, or if they do, they're very concerned about spending it. But if you are thinking about furnishing a place, or making an investment in furniture, um, really the the price for a lot of these items is somewhere around, I would say just a couple hundred U.S. dollars, really. You know, the consignment barns are just happy to get rid of it. Usually grandma or grandpa or uncle has died, and the kids put the stuff in the consignment barns, and just hope somebody will will buy it and the only expense is in the shipping and as far as the shipping goes if you're going to do that if you're going to send things overseas uh, by ship remember that um, you should fill up the container as much as possible because even if you're only sending a couple of items they're going to charge you for the whole container I've, I've had movers admit this to me so um, Considering that it may only be a few hundred dollars for each item, you know, go for it. You know, buy 10 of them, 20 of them, you know. Uh, if you've got a place to store them or if if there's a flea market or something or you can advertise on eBay or, or whatever, um, I think you could move this sort of thing pretty quickly. It's really easy to take care of. Uh, I don't dust it often enough. But I just use a, a mild wood soap on it, no, you know, not those sprays. Really, really easy to maintain. Um, everything is one of a kind. And this is uh, stuff from the old days when this sort of thing was an important fixture of the home, you know. It's, it's totally functional. And my spouse actually doesn't like it too much either. It's just that this reminds him of his grandmother. Uh, uh, of whom he was very fond and um, I, I never met her alive I, I saw her funeral I, it was kind of weird her body was in the farmhouse for a few days on a refrigerated table and I got to experience a Brittany country Catholic funeral which was pretty strange and pagan and, and everything um, but uh, he's not too nuts about it but I've noticed that, you know, when you buy modern ready-made shelves and stuff, even if they're very good quality, yeah, it's great. You can move them around if and when you move. But I always find that this stuff sags. You know, it really pays to have quality work done. When we first got this apartment, which was abandoned and there wasn't even a working toilet, um, we noticed that there was this inner space here in the hallway, and it... It, it's not flush. The walls weren't flush. So even if we had bought a ready-made shelf, it would not have fit in here. So we called uh, Maison des Bibliothèques in Paris, which is a very old and famous establishment, and um, had this custom thing put in. And I noticed some slight sagging on these two shelves, which... Um, are probably overloaded and I should probably do something about that but the rest of them all seem very very straight and uh, this must be whoa, 15, 16 years old now and this is going to stay here if and when we sell or rent this apartment you know it's, it's just a, a, a feature to the apartment the shelves can be moved this is just the way that we, we chose to arrange them and it was very, very well done. And his parents thought we were kind of nuts because um, we paid about 10,000 French francs for it at the time, which is about $2,000. But, you know, to have something like this, these are my books. His books are in the back. He's got ready-made shelves back there, which are totally sagging. Um, I've just been really happy with it. The only thing I could think of is that it's a little bit hard to dust this. And also, I've got a lot of knickknacks here, which is not really too cool. And I don't arrange the books very neatly. I sort of can find things and generally know where things are. So it works for me. Um, but 
we could have we could have asked to have glass doors put over this. Um, they could definitely be added, you know. So those are my thoughts on you know quality furniture, and the reason as I I think that I think that I may have said maybe I didn't say the reason I haven't done another I was for sale installment was I recently had some shocking news about creation books and if you would like to know what shocked me so much look at a website please called creation I think it's called creationbooksfraud.com I will try to get my head together though and uh, do another installment shortly.